Good morning, Dan Reed, Woodland Forestry Products. Today I'm gonna to shoot a video of the assembly of an HM130 Max track system on one of my custom trailers. Um, we're gonna do the full assembly. We sell quite a few of them. This is primarily for the customers that I sell to uh, as kind of a reference as they're putting their trailer together. Um, so we're going to start by uh, unpacking the, the track section. I already have the mill out of the, out of the crate, so I get to the tracks. And I'll show you the tools that we use. Uh, I've got them all laid out on the side. And so I'll be back in just a second, and we'll show you the tools, and then we'll get started with this thing. Okay, we're back. So here's the tools that, that I lay out, and this is everything I'm going to need to put this trailer together. Um, I start out with a set of uh, metric and American um, sockets, a bunch of ice grips, an impact, a string. Um, I use four bar clamps and I have some spacers here that are pre-cut and you can see they're labeled for HM130 Max. Uh, they're cut to 36 and a half inches long and they have the center line marked down the center of them. And once we get going, you'll see how we use them, but I, I use them in between the track sections. That gives me the perfect width and this, is, uh, this would be something good whether you're putting it together on my trailer or their trailer. Um, it, it's just something that I, I learned along the way and it saves a lot of time. Um, we'll go over the trailer here. Okay, I, I have about 50 of these made a year um, and, and they don't really last all that long. And, and this isn't a promo for selling the trailers. Uh, Woodland Mills makes a good trailer themselves. Um, it's just these are road ready and, and uh, available for my local customers because we can't ship them anywhere. So they come with six jacks down each side or three down each side, six total, plus a tongue jack. So there's seven jacks total. They're made from one piece, six inch channel. Uh, all the tabs are already put on the trailer. So all the bolt holes in the track line right up and I provide the nuts and bolts to, to attach it. 14 inch radial tires, uh, ST205, uh, 75 hour 14s, I believe, uh, greasable bearings four pin uh, light connector um, and a two inch ball. So we can show you the lights on the back of the trailer. So, and then over in the, the corner there, you'll see the crate that the sawmill came out of. There's a track extension and there's two track boxes that are inside every crate. Uh, this crate had been badly abused by the freight company. Um, and that's why it's here, um, but I do a lot of this. So uh, we'll start unpacking it and uh, we'll get back to you as we move along. I forgot to mention that we're gonna level the trailer before we start anything. And as the, the track pieces come out of the crate, they go right out of the trailer. So we'll level the trailer and then I'll unpack. So keep watching and, and you'll see how I level out the trailer. You gotta drop the tongue jack down to set the back two jacks. So we'll do that. You always start with the back two.
this will hold true whenever you're setting your sawmill up and getting it ready to use. Backpacks first, then the front packs. And when you got everything level, then you drop the two center jacks and just take a cut away. So we'll start out getting it somewhat close. I know how the floor slopes in here, so that's pretty quick for me. I use a six foot level. Start out going across the back of the trailer. Perfect. Then move to the front of the trailer. Check to make sure we gave it the same number of cranks. Perfect. Perfect. Once we're done, we'll grab the two center jacks. Just bring them far enough down that we're just touching the floor. Start unpacking the, the tracks now. Okay, I'm back. Uh, here's what it looks like once we get the track sections laid out on the on the trailer. And it's just kind of a rough layout right now. Um, we kind of go over it. But one thing to pay attention to is when you're, when you're putting your tracks together, um, you want to make sure that, that your, your joints line up. If you got a big gap in between one of them because the rail wasn't cut straight or whatever, uh, you're better off playing musical chairs and getting that one that's out of whack uh, put to one end or the other where it doesn't matter or doesn't butt up against anything. It's rare that it happens, but it does happen. So every trailer that I assemble, I check the track sections to make sure they're going to they're gonna line up nice. And I, I can tell these are all good. I didn't have to jack anything around. A little bit of a gap isn't going to hurt nothing, but an eighth inch gap, you're going to feel it all the time. So you definitely don't want, uh, you know, a 16th would be the biggest I'd ever allow, and I'd rather not see a 16th inch gap. So 
Here's the saw head that's gonna go on this trailer eventually. It was a return from a customer that bought direct from Woodland Mills and the freight company beat it up. And um, anyway, we're gonna need some parts for it, but it'll be like brand new when I get done with it. Um, so we got the bunks on the floor. We're back to the tool table. We got our, our log clamp brackets. We got our log clamps. Uh, we got our log stops on there. Uh, there's uh, some, these are leveling bolts and I put the rest of them over on the other side of the shop because we don't use those with a trailer assembly. And gusset plates, those are some brackets for the, for the log clamp system. And a bunch of nuts and bolts in those boxes and then your, your track stops that go on the end. So I'm going to start laying this thing out. We'll go back to time lapse and we'll butt back in when, when we get something important to talk about. So here we go. Okay, so the next thing I did was I lay all the nuts and bolts out. I, we bolt this down to the trailer with inch and a half by half inch bolts, washer on top, lock washer on the bottom. There's a little wiggle room in the holes so we can, we can jockey things around to get them perfectly straight. Now, one thing I don't, you know, some guys might get excited about it, but when you look at how the tracks line up, that really means nothing. It's covered by the bunk and it, it just is the way it's manufactured. What's important is that when we're all done, these are the right, the same height. And, and, and they do do a good job of that. Um, you're gonna find out as we tighten things down, those edges will line up perfectly. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and put these 18 bolts, washers, and nuts on. And, and then I'm gonna start putting some vice grips on the, on the joints. Those bolts that I'm gonna put in are just gonna be finger tight for now and I'm gonna pull everything in place with vice grips. So here we go. Well, here's where we're at. You can see the spacers are in with the bar clamps on, the strings attached to run down the center, okay? Um, every joint has two vice grips on it. So we put a bottom vice grips on, pinch it together, and then we put, a, put one over the gap to line them up. And uh, I've got kind of a hodgepodge of vice grips here. But you can see that way, uh, nothing can move on it. Um, the next step is going to be to get the two ends where I want it and tighten them up. And then once I got those tight, I'll come through and tap the center so that that, that center line lines right up with the string. You can see it's real close, but I'll probably bring the one end toward me and then bring this section over just away from me a little bit. But I'll get that string so it's perfectly on the center of those boards. Once that happens, then I'll, then I'll snug a bunch of them down so that it doesn't move anymore. And then we got some gusset plates that we got to deal with on the joints. So we'll be back in a second after I get this all straightened out and get some, some bolts tightened up in it. Here's a shot of where the gussets go on the track. So you'll have four gussets. Um, they look just like this one, okay? I find it's easier to use the vice grips to pinch it on there and get the holes lined up. Now, one thing to keep in mind on this trailer is you have two different length bolts that come with the trailer. You got the long ones and the short ones. You cannot put the long ones on my trailer on top of the, the channel. So these four bolts, have to have short, short, these four holes have to have short bolts in them. You can use the long ones back here, but if you use the long ones up front, they're just a sixteenth of an inch too long and they're gonna go down and push on the trailer, which is gonna cause your 
your track to jump up in the air. I can probably show you that. So but we're gonna put two of the long ones in and two of the short ones up front. And I, I think I can show you what would happen if you put a, a long one. Where are we? If we put a long one in right here, where are ya? I'll find you. You see there? It's just touching the trailer, so we gotta use the short ones there. There's a way we can play musical chairs with these longer bolts. We can use them on the log clamps because they don't touch on the log clamp system, but they do touch on on these gusset plates. So don't don't use the long ones here. So we're gonna put that one back. And we'll have, I mean, we only put four of them in for right now. And we'll do that on all four of them. And then eventually we'll put the bunk in there and we'll put two long ones in the back of the bunk and two long ones on the edge of the bunk. Um, so we'll have at it here. So here we are, we've got our two center bunks installed. You see there's two longer bolts, two shorter bolts. These are all four on back or longer, the four on the front or shorter. We are gonna use our, our extra long bolts now when we put our log stops on, uh, or the log clamps will actually go here. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of the, the bunks on now um you know and and the rest of them are all short bolts so you just line them all up and put them on uh and then we'll go over uh putting on the the stops on the end of the track once i get all the bunks on um yeah we'll take it from there one thing that i didn't mention is sometimes when you tighten things up you can get a little movement here so the two of them don't line up perfectly. And the one thing I'll never tell you, and nobody will ever tell you, this one looks perfect, um, is you can tap them with a hammer and they'll move quite easy, actually. So if you got one hanging out, if you don't have them perfect, it'll clunk. It probably won't affect how the saw saws, but it'll drive you nuts because it's making a it clunk. So, you know, even a tra train going down the track makes it makes a noise. So anytime you got a joint, you're going to have that. But I, when I look at this one right here, I can tell it's out just a hair. And I'll probably tap that with a hammer so it's perfect. It's easy to tap them in. It's not very easy to tap them out, however. So, yeah, and that one there I'm going to probably tap as well. Okay, here we are, all the bunks are on. Uh, keep in mind that when you put these end bunks on, you put them all the way out to the end. If you try to use that set of holes, this bolt in the log stop is gonna hit the bunk. So put them all the way out on both ends. Um, I've also got the log stops on, or the, the track stops on. Uh, for now, I'm just gonna tighten them up uh, to make sure that once I do put the saw head on, it isn't going to roll off the end. 
but I tend to shove it all the way in and then just tighten them up. And then after the saw head's on, you can adjust them however you want. No two saw heads are exactly the same. So one may hang out just a little bit farther than the other, but you gotta have the saw head on there to do that. So we've got all the bunks on and they're all tightened up and they're all tightened as tight as I can get them with a three ace uh, DeWalt cordless impact. Um, and, and that's tighter than you're going to get them by hand anyway. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to tighten up these log stops or I keep calling them log stops, but they're track stops or saw head stops. And they're what keeps the, the saw head from rolling off the back of the track. Um, and then the only thing we'll have left after that is our log stops and log clamps. And then it'll be a wrap. Um, so we'll be back after I get this tightened up and then we'll go through how the, how the log clamps go on. Okay, I got the camera tilted down, but we're going to work on one log clamp system here. And you can see it. You can kind of see it. Let me see if I can get that a little better. Okay, so here's the log clamp. This is how they go. You got that uh, welded on angle on, on the, the one side, and then this bracket will go on the other side. Uh, I like to set it up this way because I think you, I get a little more room out of the log clamp rather than reversing it, but they will go either way. Now one thing that I do when, when I put a clamp on, first thing I do, I want my clamp tilting into the log, okay? Now these brackets are made at an angle, so if you have a really big log and you're going to try to go out and grab it, you can, you can pull it out, turn it over, and then it's going to be tilted out, okay? But when, when I put them, put them together, I want this little bar here, the, the paddle, to hook in like so. Okay, hopefully you can see that. So, it, and then we loosen them up. A little sticky, but it'll free up. Okay, and, and you can see this clamp is tilted this way. Okay, you do have the ability to pull it out, flip this around to the other side, and then it'd be, but I find that it grabs the log better this way. So we're going to put this on. we have for this uh, two in each side and, and I'll do that quick while we got a video running so you can see, hear how much noise I make while I'm doing this. Now you, you have multiple places with the HM130 you get three of these clamps if you've got an extension. You get two with the mill and one with the extension. You can put them in any slot you want. Um, this is kind of how I prefer to do it. I like to stay away from the axle. But, but you can put them anywhere. You can also buy additional ones if you want one everywhere. Um, but there's really only one space without one right now. So these were all four long bolts. And I'll show you what I got done at the end. Uh, what's left over for bolts, there won't be many but they always send a few extras. So the other thing to keep in mind is 14 millimeter socket, 15 millimeter wrench. The whole track other than the three quarter inch nuts and bolts, which is really a half inch, but it's got a three quarter inch wrench. 
The whole track is put together with 14 millimeter and a 15 millimeter wrench. So when we do this, I like to start with the front one because they kind of hold it squarely. See, I got it almost an eighth of an inch between that bolt and the top of the trailer. The other thing, if you can see this, push the whole clamp that way as you tighten it because if it's all the way over here, it can bump into the side as it's coming out. It needs that little bit of extra room. clamps on and we'll be back to talk about Oh, here's what was left over. A whopping, there were zero nuts, which is very common. And you had two little bolts and four big ones. Well, here we are, we've finally completed it. Um, I think we've gone over everything we need to go over on this trailer. Uh, we started at about 11.45 today. It's about two o'clock, we finished up. Um, you know, I took a little break in between uh, so, so it goes pretty fast once you get started at it. Um, and, and I'm proud of these trailers. Uh, we've sold a lot of them and the customers really like them. Uh, so I appreciate you watching today. Hopefully it's given some people some good tips. Uh, we'll be coming out with a, a video soon of assembling the saw head and, uh, putting the saw mill on or the saw head on this trailer and making all the adjustments. We, we shot a video, or I shot a video about a year ago, and it's been really popular, but there's been a few little changes since then, uh, tricks and tips that we can add to it. So we'll shoot another one, put it out there shortly, and I'd like to thank you for watching, and I hope you all have a great day.